Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036368 This afternoon, we will want to go ahead and spend a bit of time uh, actually looking at, you know, we began to talk about becoming one flesh, becoming one in matrimony. But the angle with which we are going to look at it is to look at it from the practicality of the outworking of our matrimony. The practicality. We will we don't want to keep dwelling on problems. We want to deal on how can we make our matrimony to work practically. Praise the Lord. Eh? The practicality of an effective matrimony for the clergy. How do we make it to work, you know, practically? There are a few passages that we are going to refer to. We already are going to be looking at how do we apply the cross? What God is dealing with as the matter of the cross how does it affect our matrimony in becoming one flesh? So, we're going to read some few passages. My wife is going to help us to read Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. I just want us to read Ephesians chapter 5. Even though the normal thing will have been for us to begin from verse 21, I want us to please start from verse 18 and you will help us read up to verse 33 and we will draw issues from this chapter as much as we can. We can because we are looking at building our matrimony. In becoming one. Yes, ma'am. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, Love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. 
For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me throw a question before we go ahead. Can I throw the question? And I want any of you to please answer. Was your wife a Christian sister before you got married? need answers. Yes? She, she is a Christian sister before you got married. Now I need a sister to talk to us. Where and how did you meet your husband? Yes, sister? Yes? You met him where? In a church. A many Anglican church. The day I was ministering to some missionaries who came back from the field. So I was just uh, highlighting to them concerning cross-cultural missions. And they <laughs> you fell into this mission. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she was a missionary that time. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the mission ended on this side now. <laughs> Let's confirm from him what happened. How did mission end? <laughs> the mission didn't end. It continues. The mission continues. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she said the truth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Now, I need another sister to tell us. Where did you meet him? There's a hand at the back here. Praise the Lord. Amen. I met my husband in a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tell the story. I was there when he walked in. So that was where we met. Oh, he just walked in. So how did you... How did it happen? Well, the first time we saw, then later through the elders, they came, invited me talking and all that. They met our pastors and everything. And that's <laughs> how everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Eh? Somebody wants to tell us another story. There's another sister putting up her hand. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Mine was in Zaria. Uh -huh. I went to spend my holidays with my auntie. Oh. So they were living in the same compound, tenants. So that was how we met. Mm. Uh, what he said, he told my auntie. He doesn't talk, but... It was shocking to my auntie and the husband. He told them that this is my wife. Wow. They said, who is it me? So when they now told me, I said, I said, no. I can't marry quiet people. I talk. And he doesn't talk. It will not be possible. But it became possible. Praise the Lord. And that's where you are today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, some of you wondered why we started from that angle. I want
want us to begin to look at the practicality how to make our matrimony to work. So let me ask one more question before I go ahead. And I want a sister, I can see some sisters looking at their husband and say, should I talk? <laughs> what were the things he said that made you to say, okay, let me agree with this man? What were the things he said? What was he saying that time? Or he just came and said, you are my wife. And that's how you agreed. Pastor. And the body first, according to him, he said, God told him that, uh, that God told him that I um, will be his wife. He so talked he, to the pastor. He didn't talk to the pastor, but he had it in his mind for the very first time that he saw me that this is my wife. But he didn't talk for about a year. So I didn't even look at that side until one day and I said I should go and be praying over some matters. So after some time, he said he wanted to see me. But over the night, the Lord told me that he would propose to me. I said, it can't be. Because we have been exchanging books, reading books together. He never opened his mouth. Mm. So this very first day that he was coming to propose to me, I, saw, I just saw a picture of the person I want. But I said, it can't be. That he, will, he is so spiritual than that. So when he just came, just said, look, uh, I want you to think about this issue. That... The Lord is leading us to be together and that you be my wife. So that was how he just said it. All right. And I told him I would go and pray. And then you prayed. I prayed. And the result is that. Uh, and that's why everything is like this now. <laughs> now, can I please, I'm sorry. Oh, the books you were exchanging together at that time, reading here and there. What happened to those books when everything started? <laughs> when everything started, the whole books, you know, they changed. It started yeah. writing uh, the names of uh, both of us. Okay. And uh, the books, uh, many of them had to do with uh, this burning him, moving the Holy Spirit, marriage, and so forth. So, the result is... Uh, the result is this. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. So, uh, will any brother please remind us what you said to her when you first met her? Yes, there's a man here. This might sound uh, very carnal, <laughs> but not. It was a divine arrangement anyway. Uh, I said it, it, will, it will sound that way because I met her in one of the eateries in Lagos. I, as a jilted man, I met a jilted lady. It was never arranged by any of us. But we met at one of the eateries, precisely Mr. Biggs. And I met her eating what I ordered for. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the one I thought will, I would speak to. And I did not see her over and, for over and her. And at the same time, the woman met was waiting for a man that did not show up for over an hour. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so the equation balanced. <laughs> and that's why I said it will, it will sound so kind of. But it was at the time I said to even my elder sister, I don't want to do anything with any lady anymore. But she forced me to go and wait for that particular lady, not knowing that the lady will not show up. But God was making a divine arrangement. Wow. And as God will make it, this lady, I have never met her once. At the end of the day, I took my food from my table to her. She avoided me. And I said, please, I just, I needed somebody to console me. So she said, on one condition, that number one, I mean, on two conditions. Number one, there will be no discussion. Number two, as soon as the man she was waiting for comes, I will have to wait and leave. I said yes. But I said my answer will be on one condition too. That you will only have to tell me your name, your hometown, and that will be all. But at the end of the day, she mentioned her name, and she mentioned her hometown, 
and she it happens to i mean she came from my own look my own own town uh -huh. so we are from the same town and uh, because she had it and i never knew she had heard about me before then because she was not living in her hometown she was living in lagos and where her mother said to her look i want you to come and join a society in our church because she's the only child of a parent and they took her away said come back home join a society there is a brother that leads that society he knows how to sing very well and his name is this that so the question she asked is are you that person and i said yes and at the end of the whole thing uh, i said okay i'm going to take you with my car to your house but we didn't discuss that but when we got home uh, the mother the woman who was taking care of her has been a girlfriend of my father when they were in secondary school wow yeah. and at the end of the day the man said oh and the woman said are you the one taking care of my daughter now if you are going to marry her i am giving her to you but make sure you are a good boy and that's how it all started that's and how everything started both of us could not even say anything to each other we we all knew within ourselves it has started thank you <laughs> this is good now thank you very much I want to ask because you know sometimes what makes matrimony to go sour many many times is that once you got married we forgot how we met And we usually forgot what was the spectacular thing that God may have done to make this relationship to come to where it is. To the extent that because we usually forget what exactly God may have done or even the promises we ourselves have made, or the impressions that brought us to the point of saying, if this is your will for me, oh God, I'm ready for it. It brings us to a place where we cannot trace where we have come from and where we are going. And as we are going to look at Ephesians chapter 5 uh, this afternoon. I just felt we need to begin by first recognizing that now I didn't ask another question, those of us that your wife was not born again when you met, or you yourself, you are not even a Christian when you met. And there are some of us like that here. Yeah? Oh, my Lord Bishop. Uh, sir, would you like to tell us what happened, sir? Yes. It was in 1991. I saw her when coming from my house. It was the first day I saw that lady around our area. So I began to trace where she was going. And I continued to walk to see where her journey will terminate. Then she entered into one shop. And unfortunately, I couldn't go into that shop. So I gave up. Until on another day, I saw her closer to our house. So when I went there, she rejected my offer. I went with my friends because uh, I was actually a very wayward person. So we lose contact after a year until 1992, the early part of 1992. So she 
I, I looked at her and I didn't have interest uh, on her again. Then she began to look for where I was because a friend of mine was dating one of her friends. So suddenly they came into his house and we met. So I was having a wristwatch and she requested for the wristwatch and I gave it to her and that was the beginning of it. So she visited me in my own house and we married without consulting our parents. Suddenly the one morning they saw a second person coming out of my own house, of my own room. So that was the beginning of it. And here we are today, to the glory of God. We married in 1992. How, how has it worked? You mean the marriage? How did, you, how did it work out? Uh, I am trying, you know, I want us to see that there are some of us that we met one another in fellowship in the church or in a special way in which you prayed you knew the will of god and all of this now there are some of you sitting here that when you were in the bush that's when you caught this girl isn't it and now you are here we wanted to touch several issues how did you come through to this point well after all that we have passed through and our parents saw us uh, she remained in my own house and after a week as our tradition we went and reported to her parents that they shouldn't be looking for their daughter elsewhere she is in our own house. You eloped with her. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a Benjamite? Pardon? Are you a Benjamite? No, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm a Mogabul man. <laughs> Mogabul man. Mongo local government in Plateau State. All right. Yes. So after that, we continued. And uh, after having a child and the second one, uh, I think the third one before we formalized our marriage in a Christian way and even before that time actually we were we, the, two, the first two, uh, two children we had we were never Christians even with her so it was after that time when the third child was about to come we saw the need of surrendering our lives to Jesus Christ and that we did and this is where we are today to the glory of god praise the lord thank you now thank you sit down right. we appreciate appreciate your story so we are coming from two grants which is going to give us a basis of dealing with our matrimony those actually met themselves in Christ there were prayers our sister was already a preacher ministering to missionaries and uh, one of the missionaries <laughs> saw his mission <laughs> inside and that's how the mission has continued we thank God for that and then we saw those who met in the supermarket. You know, all kinds. But the matter is that we are here today. Abi? Now, we have people that started in a manner that you would think this is terrible. That God will not have anything to do with it. But because the grace of God has appeared the woman that was difficult has become a joy and the two of them are here they are now preachers Abby, and standing together I know they will never cancel their church members to elope 
Have you? The time of ignorance the Lord winked at. He has commanded every man everywhere now to do what? To repent. Praise the Lord. Now, two issues that I want to begin to highlight from the passage that we have read. And I want to raise it. My wife will be making contribution as we go ahead. Now, in Ephesians chapter 5, one thing that touched me was that even though we would like to separate the issue of marriage from Christian life, I discovered that God actually treats our marriages, our home, as an expression and as a continuation of Christian living. I don't know how you understand this now. Sometimes we think that when we come to marriage, it's a different chapter. So we feel that there's something we can do anywhere else. Among the brethren, among the church, which we think our marriage or our wives, or our husbands are not, is that is not part of it. But as we were looking at Ephesians, what I found is that that chapter, chapter 5, that we read, you will notice that from verse Verse 1. The instruction is, Be ye therefore followers of God. As what? As their children. And I discovered that all the instructions that was coming from verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, verse 4, verse 5. Do you know that if we were careful, to carry out everything in that verse, from verse 1 down. And we recognize that it is not a different man that God was speaking to in the church or in the fellowship. Apart from the man who is the husband or the wife at home. Do you know that all the issues of Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1, if we had been living like that, there is no reason why our matrimony should not be great. I don't know why you understand what I'm saying. Eh? Let's quickly highlight what I'm talking about. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. Does that include the husband? Eh? Does that include the wife? And walk in love as Christ has also loved us. And has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. Is that when we became husband, did we graduate from that? Eh? Eh? Or when you became a wife, can we say, no, this passage is not for, for a woman who is married? Eh? All right. Now, can I ask, let me just read them as I'm drawing my issues, then ask you a final question. Is it about fornication, all uncleanness or covetousness? Let it not be once named among you as the comet saints. Does that apply to the husband and the wife? Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. This you should know, that no warmonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, 
who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come the wrath, the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Now you will notice that the instructions were going on and on and on and on and on. And you will see that by the time we come to verse 18, actually the passages, verse 18 didn't end yet, even with full stop. It didn't end with full stop in verse 19. It didn't end with full stop even in verse 20. We go to verse 21. Up to verse 22. We see a continuous instruction. So let me first put these two questions to you. Do you know that the principles of being a Christian and of Christian living will enhance and give us a Christian home? Eh? Alright. So, can you agree with me that wherever there is disharmony in the family, it is a direct, it's not because of your wife, it's not because of your husband, it is simply because you stopped being what? Being a Christian. Oh, am I confusing somebody? Eh? It's the truth. Anytime you have to use a rough language against your wife, could you have done that in a church fellowship? Eh? Talk to me, sirs. Why not? Why not? I thought you were... Why not, sir? Yes, sir. Because it is unchristian to do that in the fellowship. And you don't want anybody to think you are not a Christian. So, aren't you a Christian at home when you say that to your wife? <laughs> I don't know whether I'm touching something quickly. All right. So, the first thing, that's why I was asking that when the other sister stood up said, I was in a meeting ministering to missionaries that's why i met my husband he's a missionary before i met him and if he was not your husband if he is not your husband and you are still ministering to missionaries will you want to get annoyed with those that you are ministering to as missionaries eh? talk to me If any of them misbehave, let's say as you are doing something, you just say, okay, what are you doing? What will you likely do as a minister to missionaries? You will say, brother, it's not like that. Let's pray. The Lord will help us. Am I right? No, no, no. I want us to be practical. Aha. But now that, that you are married and it's now your husband, did you see the question I'm trying to touch? I just wanted to raise an issue this afternoon in terms of the practicality. And the first practical thing is that we can have Christian homes if we just choose to be Christian. It may look very simple, but that's the issue. But every
every time I find husband and wife not moving together, not flowing together, I hear them say, look, the fact that I'm a Christian does not mean you can take things for granted. Let us face reality. What is Sister Gloria doing today, Baba Bishop? <laughs> Brother, okay, you want to be of assistance? <laughs> they are facing reality there. Now, you see, the question that I'm raising is the fact that somehow what makes our marriages, our matrimony, a challenge. Can I tell you very simply? Can I tell you? It is that it is only in your marriage in your relationship like this that you can actually be a Christian. Anywhere else in church you are a drama. Do you understand? It is only here that God allows you to test how Christian are you and how much progress you are making. Oh, am I communicating at all? You see, and this is why the spirituality of any man is not actually measured by what he does on the pulpit. God himself knows that anywhere else you are impressing people. It's only here that even if you pretend for a long time, after one time, you will say, how long? How long will I be keeping quiet? Let me tell you what is what is the bitter truth in my mouth. I want to be myself. <laughs> that's when you are that's when we are touching whether you are a real Christian now. Anywhere else. So I feel like saying to you that the first thing is that you must know that your matrimony is the place of the test of the genuineness of your Christian experience. And if we have to deal with it, we are not, even God himself is deliberately wanting this marriage, this relationship, because that's where he grows genuine Christian. Oh my God, I don't know whether I'm communicating with you. Now, let me tell you as a pastor, I don't believe, I don't believe that you are patient. You say why? You see, as long as you are counseling somebody or praying for somebody, or ministering for somebody, you know you can be so so gentle as the sister he is talking. You say, yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm. God. And the woman is talking. And you say, eh? Uh-huh. God will fight for us. The Lord is in charge. And he is talking. And a woman can talk for one hour. You are patient enough to do what? To listen. And at the end, he says, Sister, I believe God. Jeremiah 32 27 says, I am the God of all flesh. Nothing. It's too hard for me. Let us pray.
when she finishes, when you finish praying for her, what do you do? You even escort her to the door. I say, sister, the Lord bless you. Don't feel bad. God will fight for us. I am praying for you. Amen? <laughs> Why were you able to do that? Because something tells you that she will be discouraged if you don't patiently listen and minister. It is the same person who listened for one hour and prayed and really ministered and told the lady, don't be worried. God is in charge. He will help us. Now, let me ask the next question. How many of you have successfully sat down and listened to your wife as you used to listen to a counselee for one hour and when she finished <laughs> Wow, I, I'm now in trouble right now. So please, let's talk. What causes that? <laughs> what did the archbishop say? I should not raise the question again. <laughs> that the Mr. Toad said, whenever you come to the issue of tail, jump over it. <laughs> yes, you want to say something? Yes, sir? My, my own reason. Sometimes uh, there are things maybe uh, I am trying to avoid. There are, there are, there are things I am trying to avoid. You may, you may want to tell me something. And I, as she's, talk, she's talking, I, I found that she, she's entering to where <laughs> I will want. She's going somewhere. Somewhere. And even though I know this thing has been bothering her, even though I know that she needs answer to her dad, somehow I felt that this answer may come from my pocket. So what I normally do is to begin in time to block it. Hmm. So that's it. Don't worry. I, I know. I know. So, and then eventually she will get tired, she will get fed up, and then end it up there. Imagine and, that. And then I will, uh, but uh, somehow within me, I know there is something that, that she needed. Uh, it's something she wants to speak out. Uh, she wants to express herself. But because the it place will is touch going, somewhere. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable <laughs> about it. So, I it. so, are you a Christian? That's the problem. That's the problem. That is the problem. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. That's a very honest issue that we're dealing with here. Now, do you notice that one of the critical in the I think the enemy had used is for us not to recognize that if we are actually preparing to go to heaven, the crucible that prepares a man for authentic spirituality that takes him to heaven is this relationship. I am sharing that this afternoon because I look forward that you will first of all see your marriage your husband your wife that this is a relationship that cannot allow you to be anything different from who you really are and if 
you achieve patience, if you achieve acceptance, if you achieve spirituality in this relationship, actually there is no other place that you cannot be spiritual. I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. Eh? Do you know that many of you are here, you can teach anybody how to drive. You have successfully taught people how to drive. Eh? Who was the most difficult person to teach on how to drive? Eh? It's your wife. Why? He said, he said they are not patient. The fact is that he said, I've told you. Ah, is that how to turn? Is that how to turn? Are you really turning the way we say you should turn? I thought I, I thought you had to drive now. This was very hard. Oh, she confessed that it was very hard. <laughs> It was a hard... Now, but what we are beginning to touch is the fact that any other place, any other place, you dressed up to go there. This is the only place where your spirituality is the most authentic. So whatever is happening at home, if you are angry at home, even though you are gentle on the pulpit, you are an angry man. Can you tell somebody by your side, say, what you are at home is who you really are. <laughs> now, but the picture I want us to take is that do you know that God deliberately deliberately wanting us to grow the Christian life wanting us to be the authentic Christian that he wants us to be has established our matrimony for that purpose. And I want us to pray about that you will make some input on this. I want us to pray that we will see our marriage, our matrimony as the workshop where God trains our spirituality. I want you to look at your wife and I want you to look at your husband as the on the spot on the spot evaluator of your spirituality. And it's God that wanted to give you someone that could help you to sincerely. Because you see, what I'm touching is that if it is only church ministry and what we do on the outside, that does not reveal who we are inside. You know we may be surprised when we get to heaven. Eh? When everything will be open. It might be a terrible surprise. But if God helps our matrimony to do that, to achieve that, and is growing us, growing our spirituality, Building our spirituality. Even if it looks rough. I want to believe that. It is real. So. Please tell somebody and say. The only reality. Of your Christian life. Is with me. Is with me. If, if it's the wife that is there. Eh? Is that what you are saying? <laughs> Is it, is, is, 
Praise the Lord. So let me wait. Is there any question on this? Or any observation you want to make to us? Where is it? Yes, sir. I'm asking if this uh, problem of a man not being patient with the wife, what actually is the cause? Uh, because, you. Like, you, not, like you rightly said, he can go out in the office or in the church and will be patient with somebody and talk to him as long as he wants. But if he comes back home and then the wife begins to tell him things that happen, she will begin to, he will begin to talk about rest and all those things. What actually is the cause of it? Thank you. Our brother has asked a very important question. Would you like to attempt it? What do you think causes it? Why? What makes intolerance? What makes people to listen outside when it comes to their wives or to their husbands? 